Hey, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new, my name is Hart, and today I'll be breaking down this 11-game NFL Sunday slate, main slate here on DraftKings. Million dollars up top to first place. I'll be talking through my favorite plays, going over some core plays, game-by-game -game breakdowns, as well as an early look potential build for you guys for tomorrow. As always, stay updated with injury news. Hit that like button and subscribe. And if you guys want my updated core plays uh, 30 minutes before lock, I'll have that on my Patreon link down below. Uh, yeah, that is it. Hope you guys are having a great weekend so far. Let's get right into this breakdown. Before I do, just want to recap my lineup from last week here in the Millie Maker. Uh, this is straight from my early look build uh, from last week, kind of my core plays, and it barely missed cash here in the Millie Maker. We missed cash by less than three points, pretty much because of Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown there. 3.8 fancy points absolutely killed us there. But yeah, it was a really, really solid day from the rest of the lineup. I mean, Kyler Murray, super low owned. He went for 18. Eckler, very low owned, went for 21. Everyone got a touchdown in this lineup besides, um, obviously, Hollywood Brown and Trey McBride. But obviously, Trey McBride made up for it with that huge game there. But yeah, Warren was fantastic. Uh, Hollywood, went out. Hollywood Brown, obviously, very terrible. Alave, you know, it really helped out that Jameis Winston came in because for some reason, Derek Carr has not been on the same page with Alave. Uh, so that was nice seeing uh, Jameis Winston come in. Absolutely just pepper Alave there. Debo Samuel had a touchdown. Trey McBride had a huge game. Tank Dell had a huge game. The Steelers defense was solid. It just, you know, kind of came down to less than three fantasy points, which kept me out of cash because of Hollywood Brown and the fact that all the super chalky wide receivers actually had monster games. So when they're super chalky and they have monster games, it's going to raise the floor of cash. Uh, and so barely missed, but yeah, here's the winning lineup. Yeah, not sure why the, the winning lineup uh, was not showing up, wasn't loading. But let's dive into the game totals here. Um, this slate is a very interesting slate. I actually really like it. I think there's a million different ways we can go. So I kind of help you guys kind of give thoughts on kind of how I'm going to attack it. So first game here, we have the Cardinals and Texans. going to be a super popular game to target, obviously for good reasons. Why? Because it's a 48 game total, highest of the slate so far. Uh, you know, two pretty solid offenses. Uh, the Cardinals obviously coming back with Kyler. Uh, they'll be a lot better offensively. Uh, six point spread there. Eight and a half point spread here between the Commanders and Giants. 37 and a half game total. Pretty gross there. Cowboys Panthers, obviously blowout risk here. 42 and a half game total. Bears Lions, eight point spread. Another game with blowout risk. But as you can see, 48 game total uh, tied for the Cardinals and the Texans for the highest in the slate. Raiders Dolphins, 13 and a half point spread. That is uh, massive. 46 game total, um, two point spread for the Steelers and Browns, 33. Titans, Jags, six and a half, 39 and a half game total. Chargers, Packers, looks like three point spread, 44 game total. Bucks, 49ers, 12 point spread, so obviously blowout risk there, 41 and a half game total. Jets, Bills, seven point spread, 39. And then Cardinals and, excuse me, Rams and Seahawks, two point spread, 46 and a half. So based on the game totals, there's actually a good amount of games to target. So Really like the slate, as I said. Um, I, I think there's a million different ways to go, and this is kind of why if we look at the quarterback position, you you could go with realistically five to different ten quarterbacks on the slate and feel pretty good about their ability to go for 20-plus fantasy points. So, obviously, Josh Allen is facing a tough Jets defense, but it's still one of those things. I mean, the offense goes through Josh Allen. He has the ability to get those rushing touchdowns and rushing upside and, you know, obviously throw 300-plus yards. I mean, he's very turnover-prone, as we saw. They just got rid of their offensive coordinator. But it's one of those things. You know, it doesn't really affect Josh Allen too much there, especially going against a tough defense. You know, you'd think it'd affect most, most quarterbacks. You know, it definitely affect him a little bit, but still. He has the ability to go for monster game. You know, I mean, Tua here, obviously they're expecting a lot of points in that game. Obviously a blowout risk, but still, if they're scoring a lot of points, it's coming from Tua. Most likely, obviously, the running game has really stepped up throughout the year. But, you know, Tua could easily go for 20. Herbert, same thing. Going, you know, playing at Green Bay should be a tough game. It's going to be probably a little bit cold, but he's been really, really solid, has had some huge upside games there, even with the loss of some of his wide receivers. Dak Prescott's been on an absolute heater the past few games here, 24, 32, 31, 41. Uh, blowout risk there, but obviously, if a game blows out, most of the time it's going to be because of, you know, the quarterback wide receivers doing well. Obviously, you know, there could be a bunch of rushing touchdowns, but still. Lots of like here for the quarterback situation. You know, we got CJ Stroud who has been phenomenal the, the past you know two weeks there. Justin Fields is back going against Detroit. I mean, he's massive rushing upside. He's very boomer bust, but still that game, you know, it, Fields can go for a you know, 40 a bomb there. Jared Goff, you know, on the opposite end, he's really strong. The offense has been fantastic there. And, you know, Stafford's back. He has all his weapons. He hasn't been the best this year, but I mean, going against Seattle, who's been pretty, pretty bad recently. 
you know, he's at the beginning of the season was throwing it close to 50 times in a few games, 40 plus. I mean, all it takes is for, you know, two touchdowns there and he's going to go for probably 20 plus. Even lower, you know, Sam Howell has the most dropbacks in the league, I'm assuming. I look at his past four games, 42 attempts, 52, 45, 44. You know, 10 fantasy points, 35, 21, 28. I mean, this guy's massive upside going against a Giants D- a team that can't score. So maybe that affects his dropbacks a little bit there. Maybe they'll, they'll just run the ball a little bit more, but still dropping back a ton. Kyler Murray, probably one of those guys I'm going to, uh, you know, go with again this week. 32 attempts, has that rushing upside, got that rushing touchdown. Uh, he's a really, really solid QB. Really like him there at 6.1K. Trevor Lawrence, another guy who's going to be very, very overlooked and under own, uh, has not been great this year. I think he has less throwing touchdowns in fields this year. Uh, but it's one of those things. Like, he's kind of got screwed a few games there where there's guys that he could have had multiple touchdown game, but guys barely missed, you know, catching the ball by like a half an inch with their other foot, you know, being out. Uh, you know, Travis Etienne has been fantastic this year so far in the games he's played. Like, he's had four or five games, I think, for like 20 plus fantasy points. So, obviously, that limits the upside there with touchdowns for Trevor Lawrence. So, I think he's kind of just been on the wrong end of the stick. Obviously, it hasn't been the best, but still, going against Tennessee there, I mean, a lot's like there with Trevor Lawrence. They have a lot, a lot of targets to, to go around with. You know, you got Kirk, you got Ingram, you have uh, Ridley, you have ETN out of the backfield. I mean, you have a lot, a lot of people to throw out there in Jacksonville. So, I really like him as a low owned, uh, you know, cheap play there. I mean, Geno Smith against the Rams is fine. Purdy has, you know, really solid upside just because of how efficient the offense is. Now he has, you know, Debo Samuel back. You got Christian McCaffrey. You have George Kittle. You have Ayuk. Pretty much a fully healthy offense uh, once again. So Purdy has upside, even though I don't love playing him. Um, even down here, you can get to, uh, I think the cheapest you could get to would be probably, you know, where do you go? Dorian Thompson Robinson. He will start. Obviously, not going going into a pretty tough defense here in Pittsburgh. Pass funnel defense, but still, he hasn't looked the best. But he's one of those guys that does have rushing upside. So, 4.5K. I mean, if he goes for 15, 20 fancy points, that price, that really, really help you out. But yeah, I know that I, I talked about, you know, seven to 10 different guys, but that, that's kind of how I feel this sleek can go. It's just you can go a million different ways. I don't really think anyone stands out too, too much to me. Uh, and for that reason, I do think right now I'm deciding between. Matt Stafford there, and um, Kyler Murray. And I do think I'm going to land on Kyler Murray just because of that rushing upside, but a lot's like the quarterback situation across the board. For the running back situation here, obviously we kind of have the you know the two safe plays at the top, CMC and Eckler. Uh, for Eckler, it really depends on um, the news there of Keenan Allen, if he's good to go. If he's out, and same thing with Guyton, they're, they're very, very uh, shorthanded for the wide receivers right now. Obviously, if one or both of them miss, uh, that makes Eckler even more viable to play and probably a very, very safe cash play just because he should see a ton, a ton of work. Uh, if one, you know, one or both are in, I still think you know, um, Eckler is just still a really, really solid play all around. Moving on down here, as I mentioned, ETN. I mean, he's had some monster games this season. As you can see, four games in a row with 20-plus, almost a 40-bomb there in week five. Uh, he's been super, super solid. Seen a ton, a ton of work out of the backfield targets as well so he's coming in at a pretty soft price tag pretty good matchup I mean Saquon Barkley they're gonna have to rely on him heavily the offense has been terrible with uh DeVito uh but 7.1k for Saquon he should probably see 20 plus rushing attempts gonna see passes out of the backfield I mean I like him as a contrarian play there uh you got Gibbs he's seen a ton of work there I mean look at the past three games obviously two of them without Monty but still that last game with Monty I know he broke off he got some goal line rushes which before he wasn't getting, he's seen targets out of the backfield. I mean, there's just a lot to like here for the quarterback and running back situation, uh, all from you know high end to the low end. You really can't go wrong. There's really no one that really stands out too, too much here. I mean, you got Mostert against Las Vegas, but I think Josh Jacobs is who's going to land on uh, with you know Antonio Pierce, their new uh, head coach. As you can see, the past two games, he said they're going to get you know Josh Jacobs heavily involved. 26 rushing attempts, 27. Obviously against you know the Giants' defense is not a slouch. They're not the best, but a slouch. But then the Jets defense, obviously, very good. But still, they're just rushing him a ton. 6.8K. Obviously, this could turn into shootouts, uh, which could obviously limit the upside of rushes for Jacobs. But it looks like they're getting them heavily involved. So, really, really like him there at that price tag. Tony Pollard, I think, you know, everyone's been crapping on him. Has not been the best. Has not been efficient at all this season. Obviously, they've been in a lot of blowouts, which has really limited his upside. But still, I think he's a great, great play. We know the upside is there with him. We know the line is there. 
Uh, they're going in, in, in a blowout, so they could rush the ball more. So I actually really like Tony Pollard as like a contrarian play there. The 6.6K, I don't think enough people are talking about him or landing on him. You got Monty, who will see goal line work. He had another huge game there. Obviously, he had a huge run, but still, they're going into the Bears. Expect a lot of points to be scored in that game. You got Brees Hall, who should see 15-plus attempts. Has it been the best this year because of that offense? But, yeah, I mean, if they can keep that game close, it looks like he should be a big part of it. Absolutely love Derrick Henry against Jacksonville. I know, you know, you can't really look at past performances against teams, especially in the NFL, um, you know, because everything changes. There's so many different variables, but it, for some reason, Derrick Henry just absolutely torches Jacksonville. It, it's just a thing. I, I don't know why, but it's a thing. Absolutely torches them. I think he's averaging 105 yards in the touchdown per game uh, in his career against Jacksonville. Uh, so I really, really like Derrick Henry here. I know their offense has been not the best there with Will Levis. Great first game. Obviously, horrific, horrific second game against Tampa Bay. If they go down big, obviously, they're not going to run the ball with Derrick Henry. That's the risk there, but still... I think it's well worth the reward because he's a guy who can actually nuke the slate there with one run. So absolutely love him. Same with Aaron Jones. Absolutely love him. Seen a ton of work. Six uh, targets the past two games out of the backfield. Uh, 13 plus attempts in both games as well. Huge part of that offense really just comes down to can he break off a long pass or if he can get a touchdown because if he can, he should have a monster game here against the Chargers and they're going to need to score points. So it looks like a very, very good spot for him. I do like James Cook here. Uh, you know, got benched after fumbling the ball in that first drive, came back, and it was really, really solid there, 9.1 yards uh, per rush on average, and he can get involved out of the passing game. So I do think they're going to get him back to kind of this beginning of the season look for James Cook, where they're going to rush him probably 15-plus times, get him a couple of targets out of the backfield. A uh, very, very explosive player, so I like him a lot. Moving on down here, James Conner stands out to me, one of those guys who should see 15-plus attempts, and he can see multiple targets out of the backfield. Now, I mean, look at last year with him and Kyler. I mean, James Conner had some massive games. Really, really like pairing him with Kyler. It's not the most optimal, but still, you know, he if that offense is going, James Conner is going to be a big, big part of it. Moving on down here, I mean, we got Singletary uh, coming off a big name there, uh, going against that Swiss cheese uh, defense for Arizona. Jalen Warren is great for me last week. Another one of those guys who, you know, saw the most attempts of the season so far for him because he's actually rushing the ball pretty well, but still. Going to see probably close to 10 attempts, and he's going to see multiple targets out of the backfield. He's just been very safe and consistent, so I do like him once again. We got Henderson with, uh, you know, Matt Stafford back. This offense should be way, way better. As you can see, the first two games there when I think Stafford was in for both of those, he went for 10-plus fantasy points in both, you know, 12-plus rushes, multiple targets out of the backfield. So he's a super cheap option if you're looking to get, you know, pay down for running back. I think Henderson's one of the better, cheaper plays. Khalil Herbert is back, so if he's going to start, I mean, it's a very cheap price tag for him. If he's not on a, like a, a limit, a, a snap count limit, he looks really, really good. Obviously, Gibson is doubtful, so that should just mean more work for a guy like Brian Robinson at 5.9K. Don't love the spot there. Obviously, there's blowout risk, so they could definitely rely on the running game more, but still, I'd rather get to different areas. That's really it. Don't really have a ton of interest. You could look to Tajay Spears here if you do think the, the Jaguars are going to get out to a huge lead uh, to start the game. Uh, but that's really it. So obviously, I know I kind of touched on like 40 different people, but a lot to like here for the running back situation. I do think for right now, I'm going to land on Derrick Henry there, and I might throw another running back in the flex. Wide receiver situation is a little bit different. Uh, a lot of guys at the top are obviously you know, pretty pricey. Hill, Lamb, Diggs, Allen, and Brown. We kind of know what we're getting from all of them. All guys who should probably see close to 20 fantasy points, if not more. So if you want to land on one of them, you know, I think Hill probably stands out as the best, uh, but still, I think they're all solid plays. I don't think I'm going to get up to either any of them right now, but I think, obviously, they're pretty safe. The guy I do have a ton of interest in right now is Cooper Cup. With Stafford back, we we know the workload that Cup's going to get, as we saw against you know Philadelphia and Arizona, 12 and 9 targets. Monster games there for Cup. This is probably the cheapest we'll get him all year. It's probably the cheapest he's been in the past few years as well, so absolutely love that price tag for Cup there, 8.1K. Um, Devonta Adams looks fine. There's a, a nice bring back Waddle just hasn't been the best and they've kept his price up, which is pretty annoying there just because the offense is pretty high powered moving on down here. I don't mind Thielen. Another one of those guys who's just seen a ton of targets. They should be down to have to throw the ball a ton uh, moving on down a little bit more. I think Puka is a really solid play. If you want to do a game stack there, you know, go to Matt Stafford, Cooper cup, Puka. I think that has a lot, a lot of upside there. Moving on down a little bit more. I do like paying down Garrett Wilson against Buffalo. I mean, look at the targets, 12, 13, 13, 14. 
You know, the offense is brutal, but they're targeting him a ton. All it takes is for him to break off one, one big play. So I really like, you know, Garrett Wilson once again. He should be good to go, um, as it says there. But definitely keep an eye out on that because it's a huge loss to that offense. No interest in this team if Garrett Wilson's out. But just absolutely love the targets he's getting right now. I once again really like Debo Samuel. Came back, only got four targets, but he caught all four of them. Was involved in the rushing game. Obviously, they blew out Jackson Wilson and didn't have to do too much passing, but still very cheap price tag for a guy that should get heavily involved in this offense uh, now that he's you know pretty healthy uh, so far. Moving on down even more, I really like Christian Kirk here. Uh, he's been pretty, pretty solid so far this season. You know, Terry McLaurin, uh, you know, the target's kind of over the board, even with Howell dropping back and throwing the ball a ton. But still, he looks pretty, pretty solid there. DJ Moore is coming at a very cheap price tag. I mean, with Justin Fields, as you can see in this stretch here, uh, from week four to week seven, I mean, he was seeing close to 10 targets a game. Obviously, he has monster, monster upside. There's going to be a lot of points in this game. You know, DJ Moore is probably going to be heavily involved. So I love him. I love the price tag on Ridley. He looks very, very cheap here, even though he's been god-awful this season. Just super, super boomer bust, but he's a very talented wide receiver. One of these days, it's going to click. So I uh, really, really like the cheaper wide receivers, DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley, Hollywood Brown here, obviously with Kyler. Going to pair him with Marquise Brown. Just a very disappointing game there. Uh, Marquise Brown did drop uh, you know, a, a corner. Uh, it was like a 40-yard corner throw from Kyler in one of the quarters. It was right off his fingertips. He had it fully dive, so it wasn't the easiest catch, but he did drop it. Or touchdown there, so it could have been a pretty solid game for him, uh, but it's very disappointing. But I don't mind running it back with him, he's going to be the main target for uh Kyler. And they were on the same page last year and had a great, great, um, uh, great, great thing last year. So I like running it back with him. Moving that down a little bit more, Dotson, I think, is a fine, you know, cheaper value play there at 5.1. Deontay Johnson, you know, coming off a pretty disappointing game, game there after pretty some pretty solid games. So I like running it back with him here. Against a tough Cleveland defense, you know, they're going to need to throw the ball, and they should rely on some short passes down to G, uh, Deontay a good amount. Cheaper options. Um, don't love these cheaper options. They all do feel pretty boom or bust. There's no one that really, really stands out too, too much here. Um, I will mention Curtis Samuel. You know, kind of one of those guys who can have a random pop-off game or two. But I want to see where they put Tank Dell. 5.9K, really love to Dell. I mean, look at the past two games, 11 targets, 14. Uh, Nico Collins is back. So we'll go over that real fast here for the wide receiver, wide receiver situation. But yeah, Nico Collins is back, so he'll kind of be the wide receiver run there. I have a lot of interest in him, but I still love Tank Dell in the price here. They're getting him heavily involved, uh, so really like, like that price tag. Noah Brown is also questionable. If he's out, um, we can look to a guy like Robert Woods to be wide receiver three, uh, to step in there, pretty cheap value. Uh, but obviously, Noah Brown's back. I still think he's a solid play. He's been heavily targeted. Obviously, he had some monster catches. Uh, it's kind of boosted his fancy score, but still. Really, really strong wide receiver room right now. All pretty cheap price tags. Besides Nico Collins, but still, I think he's a fine play. But really, really like tanked out there. So, a lot of interest for me personally in that 5K range there for all those wide receivers. Uh, I think they all offer a ton and ton of uh, ceiling there with their receptions. Head in situation here. Uh, Kittle. Don't love the price tag for him. I mean... Obviously, he had a monster game there. Three catches, 116 yards, and touchdown. But when we've seen this offense with everyone pretty much healthy and back, Kittle's kind of like the last option. So I don't love the price tag there. Sam Laporta looks fine. Schultz looks pretty decent there as well. Uh, but I'd rather pay down to a guy like Dalton Kincaid, uh, a guy who's heavily involved in the offense there for the the Bills. I mean, Ferguson stands out to me from the Cowboys. I mean, we know Dak loves his tight ends. Trey McBride has had monster games recently, 25, 5, and then with Kyler back, he saw nine targets, caught for 131, 24 fancy points. Once again, very, very cheap price tag for him with how heavily he's going to be involved in this offense. A great, great stack here with Kyler, uh, Hollywood Brown, and McBride. So we're going to throw him in there. Cheaper tight ends, I once again really like Evan Ingram. He's always involved in this offense. Hasn't you know had too many big games here, but still pretty solid with the targets. So all it takes is for him to get a touchdown. Or have to you know catch a good amount of his targets. Jojoku, he looks very very strong there. Same thing with Komet, pretty cheap price tag for Komet, a guy who had uh, a pretty solid streak there with Fields. Once again, kind of you know Fields' first look besides DJ Moore is going to be Komet, so he's very cheap if you want to run him and DJ Moore with Justin Fields. I love the upside there. I will mention Musgrave. You know he should be involved, especially if they're down big in that passing offense. 
And I do think a guy like Tyler Higby could be a sneaky play here with Stafford back. You know, he should see uh, close to you know six plus targets there. And that is really it for right now for tight ends. Obviously, you can get a little bit cheaper if you wanted to, but I think there's a lot of good options in that kind of four to five K range there for tight ends. And then for defense, obviously the Cowboys look fantastic there against Carolina. Um, the 49ers look great against Tampa Bay. Browns against Pittsburgh look really, really solid. I mean, this Browns defense has been fantastic this season. Commander is probably going to be one of the most chalkier uh, defenses just because they're going up, going up against DeVito, who's been god awful, and they can barely pass the ball. So he looks like a, they look like a really strong play there. In terms of cheaper our defenses, we can kind of get to, you know, I don't mind the Jets. They've been very, very good at kind of keeping, uh, you know, all the opposing teams' offenses at bay, even though pretty strong offenses, as you can see. Uh, you know, still got you five fantasy points going against the Chargers, against Philly, got 11, uh, Kansas City. Seven, so it's like they haven't gone negative fantasy points wise this year so far. Obviously, you know they held Buffalo in check week one, uh, so I think you know they're definitely a little bit risky, but a pretty solid defense down there. I don't mind the Packer pack, you know, playing at home, Lambeau Field. It's always a tough situation for opposing teams. Uh, they've been strong. It's just one of the things they kind of gotten screwed by the offense being so bad that the defense has been out here a ton, and it kind of obviously depletes everyone's energy, makes them not as good, and you know they're going to end up giving points if they're out there the whole game. But I think they're a very, very good uh, punt uh, defense down there at 2300 bucks against Chargers, who the offense is very boomer bust. They're going to be down potentially multiple wide receivers. Uh, so really liking the Packers right now in Lambeau. Gives us 4300 left over to put in the flex. Let's see what we can kind of get to. Evan Ingram, don't mind that. Moving on down here a little bit more. See if we have any wide receivers. I don't mind JSN. He's been a little bit you know <clears throat> more involved offensively the past few weeks. You know, Quentin Johnson could be a sneaky play here. Um, you know, obviously caught a touchdown there. Hasn't been the best, but still, if one of those you know wide receivers misses, Quentin Johnson looks like he's going to be heavily involved. And that don't mind that as well. Otherwise, not a ton to love down here in this 4K range. I do think there's some good options, as I mentioned. Quentin Johnston, Kamat, JSN, and Evan Ingram. I think right now I'm going to go with Evan Ingram. It's a nice little bring back there. So we have Kyler Murray going against Houston. A lot of, you know, that game total was fantastic. So really like the upside there of Kyler, Kyler with throwing the ball, rushing the ball. Josh Jacobs seen heavy work. Love the narrative there against Jacksonville with Derrick Henry. Cooper Cup just way too cheap there for, you know, Matt Stafford being back. Garrett Wilson, same thing there. Way too cheap for the amount of targets he's seen per game. Hollywood Brown, way too cheap there with Kyler being back. Uh, you know, coming off a of poor performance, expect him to see 10 plus targets in this next game here against the Houston Texans, a team who can score the ball. Trey McRide, same thing. Going to be heavily involved in this offense. Uh, like him a lot. And then Everett Ingram, nice bring back there. Little mini game stack between, you know, Derrick Henry and Everett Ingram. And I love the upside there for the Packers defense. So that's the early look, you know, kind of final core play build for you guys. Uh, obviously, I'll probably switch up a few things depending on kind of the injury news we get throughout the day tomorrow. But yeah, really like this build so far. Hope you guys like the video. Hit that like button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.